Waiting for Dr. Marcel Benoit, who's going to be joining us. Actually, he is here. I'm going to admit him. He's actually here. And of course, today's topic is on that virus that has kept all of us hostage. Right, Johnny? <laughs> We've all been held hostage since March. It's been it's been quite a ride. It's been quite a ride, and it's not over. It's not over. When is it going to be over? Well, I guess, we, I guess that's I, what our good doctors are going to tell we're gonna us. We're going to ask the doctors. They're the you know, only ones who will be able to come to our rescue and, 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 and yeah. answer right. questions for us. So, sorry for the delay, guys. The eagle has landed. Yeah. <laughs> it was in flight. It was in flight. Uh -oh. Dr. Benoit, well, how well, are you? Good, good. How you doing, Johnny? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. I'm well. Okay. Great to see you. Likewise, likewise. And your daughter, second time I see, I see where, her. Where, well. where, where's my where, where's my baby girl? Here. <laughs> She's here. <laughs> how are you, my love? Hi, Daddy. Hi, right, is everything going? Good. Okay. All right. You're here with Dr. Benoit, actually. Actually, not your baby girl, Dr. Benoit. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard for you to accept, but this is, you, it, all, it almost sounds like a law firm. Benoit and Benoit. <laughs> and now, and now, uh, <laughs> she, 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 will, she will always be my, 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 my baby girl, always. That's Absolutely. for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's time for us to launch officially, Johnny. It's um, it's Sunday. Of course, we know it's 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 time for the mojo. It's time for everybody to get their mojo on. We could not wait for this time, and of course, um, with um everything that's been going on since March, we know if there's one person that has been on top of it all that that has brought us the latest information, day by day, hour by hour, it's been, and he's been very consistent about it. And he's here to bring us the latest today. But um, before we even get into that, we always do some mental health check. We always check on each other's state of mind. So Johnny, how are you today? I am, I am doing well. I am doing well. I mean, all things considered, I think every day that I'm up, every day that I'm healthy, it is a wonderful day. My family's healthy. So um, I am doing well. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm in a New York state of mind, just like you. But Very you know good. what? And I, although although we're in New York, somehow we always end up all around the world. I've been in Georgia, as you know, um, doing some work with the um, Senate. And of course, I dragged some young people with me. So we've been doing some work with the young people. As you know, you delegated me. So as my important, president, I met. Important, important work, important we work. Went from, we went from Florida, now in Georgia. Indeed, important Horizon. work. Yes, We see yes. everything that's happening. And um, uh, it's pretty scary time here in the United States. And I think those two seats in the Senate are extremely important for the Democratic Party, um, despite what anybody else uh, might think in terms of the relationship that the party has with the black community, you know, our community. Um, I think those past four years have shown the importance of at least having some allies as opposed to straight up all enemies. <laughs> so, uh, so it's important for us to really have a democratic Senate to be able to at least be able to hold the Biden administration accountable to what they promise. Otherwise, it was all for naught. Well, at least at least Trump is no longer there, so that's a that's a definite positive. I think I think for me that was kind of the ultimate goal for many of us, um, and, and we're hoping for the best. Um, we know what the plan is moving forward, so 
And, and we're, we're anticipating some great news from Dr. Renoir this afternoon. I'm very anxious. I can't wait for us to start with the conversation. And I'm sure the audience uh, who received the flyer about his, his arrival today um, is sitting with great anticipation. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to dive right into it. But I know Dr. Benoit is a gentleman. He will not find it disrespectful that I introduce his beloved daughter, Dr. Benoit, first. Um, with all the respect, Dr. Benoit, um, you know, we like to say ladies first. Um, we do share the pride. Uh, please allow me to introduce that, the other Dr. Benoit first. Would you, is, would you agree with me, Dr. Benoit? Sure, definitely. Thank you so much. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the Mojo Show, Dr. Janika Benoit. Dr. Benoit, please introduce yourself to our audience. Let them know who you are and how you ended up being Dr. Janika Benoit today. Okay. Um, yeah, so my name is Dr. Janika Benoit. I'm the daughter of Dr. Marcel Benoit. I'm a board certified internal medicine physician and I'm currently uh, undergoing training in sports medicine right now. So by the end of the year, I'll be double board certified in internal medicine and sports medicine. Uh, and I, um, it's a pleasure having, it's a, it's a pleasure you um, inviting me onto the show today. It's great to have you. I know you're trying to stay humble. You're not saying much, but for the sake of our young people watching the show today, mm -hmm. please tell us how the Haitian culture and your upbringing has contributed to the woman that you are today because I've known you for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing today does not surprise me. It doesn't shock me. I mean, I'm very proud of it. And um, it was expected. But again, knowing the struggle that some of our Haitian brothers and sisters have gone through across the diaspora, uh, knowing the struggle of immigrants, right? Many people, when they hear of Haitians, back in the days and if you were to say oh i'm haitian and and at your age uh your success would be a shock to some people mm -hmm. but who would you credit um and 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 i also want to want you to infiltrate the the concept of the culture into that how has the haitian culture shaped the woman that you are today um yeah i definitely have to credit um both of my parents um my parents uh you know, are both Haitian and they were very strict with uh, my brother and I growing up as most Haitian parents are. Um, although they were strict, I was also very strict on myself as well. So um, I was very into my books. I, I had to always get an A plus, even though if I got an A minus, my dad would tell me it's okay. The A minus is okay but I always wanted the A plus. So um, I'm grateful of the parents that I had because even though I did not always, like let's say I did not get a 100% score on an exam, my dad always told me, my mom always told me that it's okay that you know, you're know you doing your best because they always knew the type of person that I was. I always um, strive for excellence. So it was the excellence, the pursuit of excellence that I received from my parents, but I also had an internal pursuit of excellence within myself, even at a young age. So it was a combination of the two. And then um, I remember, um, you know, as a young child, my father always um, brought me around him when he went to work. So. I would see what it was like to be in the hospital. I would see what it, would like, it was like to be in the clinic. And because my dad was a physician, when I decided to um, become a, phys a physician, it was a very easy decision to make because I've seen someone do it all my life. But <clears throat> some people, there are some people that never, that don't have physicians in their family or um, even when I traveled to medical school, I met one person, he was actually the head of diversity 
board on my medical school campus. He grew up in a, a Southern culture and he had never met back in his days when he was growing up as a young boy in the South, he had never met any black physicians. So the concept of him becoming a physician never even crossed his mind because he'd never seen any black physicians before. So, I mean, I was fortunate to see someone who I was very close to um, be a physician and a great one as dad. I see all the nurses who loved him and the hospitals and the clinics. <clears throat> Those are some of, you know, I've had many great memories of child, but I, make, I, I vividly remember those times being in the hospital with my dad and following him. And he was on the computer looking at labs and all this stuff. And <clears throat> he would always have us around. The nurses knew us by our names um, because we were always at work with, with dad. Um, we knew it, uh, it was time to go to work with him, especially on the weekends. He would say, guys, you wanna do rounds with dad? <laughs> and then he would go, you would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. We would be so excited to do rounds in the hospital with that. That, was, that became a, um, a ritual, a tradition of doing rounds in the hospital with my dad. So that was an easy decision for me to make. Um, but then when I went into medicine, so it was that reason that I, uh, it was an easy decision to, my, to make because I've seen someone in my family be a physician Though another reason why I wanted to be a physician was because it was challenging and I just needed something that was challenging to do. <laughs> um, and then I, and I, was, I was a book nerd. So I knew that I would have to be in the books. I was good at studying. And those are the reasons why I went into medicine initially. But I was also very shy. So, and I didn't realize how much, even though when you're a physician, you have to talk to people, I didn't realize that you were talking to people all day and I had to break out of my shyness. And then surprisingly enough, it was actually very easy for me to break out of my shyness bubble um, when I started my third year in medical school, doing my rotations. Speaking to patients became very easy for me. Um, a lot of the patients complimented on the bedside manner that I had such great bedside manner. And I was surprised because all this, all these years, I thought I was shy. And I didn't think that <clears throat> that would be a compliment people would say to me that I had great bedside manner. And then I was thinking, okay, well, maybe there's more to this than I think. Maybe I was really supposed to be a physician because it's an, bedside manner is not something that comes naturally to some people as I've learned going through medicine, it takes us like, it takes a special person to be there and listen to the, your patient and really listen and be um, and intently listening to a patient when they speak to you because you have to sometimes um, listen in between the lines. <clears throat> you have to be an active listener when you're a physician so I've learned the power of listening and I've learned um, that I connect well with people. I didn't know that I was able to do that because in my mind, I was always just shy young girl all the time. <clears throat> and um, then I, so I went through medical school, I went through residency and um, residency, residency was okay. Um, the only thing about residency, I was like, um, I know there's much more to this work thing. It felt like um, a lot of the physicians were just going through the motions of seeing a patient, making a diagnosis, and then providing management. It just it felt, it felt almost very robotic to me. Um, it, it kind of, there was a loss of like human touch um, to seeing patients. And even though it could be stressful, sometimes you don't have time to um, provide a human touch, but I think it's very necessary, especially in the population that I served. 
It was a very underserved population in New York City. Um, so that's what I worked on in residency. I, I wanted to leave residency not being a robot. Um, I've learned to continue to practice those active listening skills um, that I realized is actually a gift that I never knew that I had. I thought I was always shy, but I'm really able to connect well with people. <clears throat> and then after leaving residency, that's when I realized, well, I didn't go to medical school just because it was challenging and just because I wanted to, just because I was good at studying, I realized that I'm able to connect with people and um, people are able to relate to me, I'm able to relate to them. And that is a very important part of being a physician. Wonderful, wonderful, excellent. Um, I know Johnny's sitting there very anxious because he has some uh, serious questions. Not at all. Not at all. Love to ask that. Not at <laughs> all. I mean, I think it is important. I think it is important. First of all, we have to go to Dr. To, to Dr. Benoit now. <laughs> Don't get confused uh, today. But um, I, no, I think it's important for uh, people to know who is speaking with them and the space from which they come. Yes. Um, because I think um, uh, as Janika said, it is uh, the ability to relate to people that makes them listen, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, knowing the, the, where someone's coming from makes you more attuned to listening to what they have to say Very and not necessarily deep. jumping into the conversation robotically, you know, starting mm -hmm. to ask questions about medical issues without really taking the time for mm -hmm. the kind of introduction that we're doing. So I think it's good. Let's keep, let's keep going. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Janika, I'm very proud of you. And, and you, we just went back memory lane as you were talking. Uh, I remember our conversation on, on, we were on a cruise together. And I was saying, I was complimenting you about how pretty you are, that you should be a model. And, and I remember you specifically told me that you were going to go to medical school and that's what you want to do. And you convinced me that you were going to do that. And you did that indeed. So today you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know what? Kudos to you and kudos to you, Dr. Benoit. So let's get into it, Johnny. Um, I'm gonna let you carry on, um, and and I'll, you know we'll we'll take turn as we. Well, you know. well, we have to give that, Dr. Marcel Benoit an opportunity to tell us yes, a little indeed. bit. Yes, indeed. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm letting practice. you have it. Yes. yes. So, uh, Dr. Benoit, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, besides being the the, the 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 father, right? A proud dad. You can see that on your face. <laughs> That's right. a, that's a basically I was about to say I'm the father of two um, um, beautiful children, uh, Janika and Jamal, and they make me uh, happy every day. Um, they, they, my, the, the, the 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 sacrifices that we made together, that we made um, to bring them up, um, really paid off, um, and hopefully they will continue on the path of success. So uh, I'm an internist, I'm an endophrologist. I've been practicing for close now to 25 years. I always been, I, I've, I've been close to the community from day one. I've, I've given numerous um, uh, um, conferences, either to, uh, to uh, or, or talks to the community, or I give conferences to doctors uh, on hypertension, on, the, on, on kidney diseases. And um, and I'm always there to really to bridge the gap in terms of education. And I think that not only I'm a doctor, I'm an educator. And, and as Jenica speaks or as she was spoken, I can feel the gene where she get all that from. Um, 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 mom and dad, uh, uh, we connect well to people. And, and I think that that gift that, for her to connect the people, um, I think it's well inherited uh, because you can see, and she 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 lived it the way that I I usually embrace my patient and the way my patient embraced me because they call me son rather than rather than doctors, and uh, so um, I can I can see the correlation. Um, of of that um, um, relate, relating to people uh, inheritance, 
and um, uh, from dad and also from from a from mom. So um, that's about it. So I'm there and I'm I'm, I'm continuing to educating uh, on on the other community. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, let's start with maybe the basic question of so the topic today is really COVID nineteen and more specifically. Uh, the vaccine. But before we get to the vaccine, um, uh, Dr. Dr. Benoit, Benoit, can you give us a quick update on the age to COVID-19, particularly in, in, in New York City, but you can talk much more broadly in terms of where, where do we stand today? We, we, heard, we hear of a second wave. Is there a third? Is there a fifth? Um, where, where do we stand in terms of this this affliction that our communities are facing? Okay, I, I, as far as New York City is concerned, the number have risen uh, exponentially for the past couple of weeks. Uh, in terms of hospitalization, we are close to 10,000 people in, in, in hospital. In terms of people in, in, in ICU, I think we're about 500 people in ICU, no, 1,000 people in ICU. And in terms of patients who are intubated, we are about 500 patients intubated. And for the past months, in ter- like in, in July, August, September, the number of deaths were reported in the, in the low teens, like uh, 9, 10. And, and recently, uh, the last number we had, we had about um, 94 deaths. Um, the rate of, of a positivity, that means that uh, people, people who are tested, who are shown to be positive, uh, was kept under 1%, like 1% for three, three months. Now it's about 6%. And one place in, in, in New York, primarily Suffolk County and Nassau County, they are really, um, 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 the, the, they are a big surge of the case surge of COVID. Nassau, Nassau and Suffolk County on December 12, they reported 2,000 cases, 1,039 for Suffolk and the rest was for Nassau. And the rate of positivity of Nassau is comparable to the state. So um, there is, the second surge is here. And, uh, and as a result of that, the governor has um, um, implemented uh, a lot of uh, restrictions. No restaurant should be open after 10 p.m. Uh, and recently, he, he, he suspended indoor dinings. So um, um, things are getting really, really, really um, uh, pretty scary in New York. But I think there's a list of fair going in New York, um, especially in Brooklyn, and Queens and the Bronx. And I'm telling you, I do not want to go through that again. What I've gone in March, April, it's, it was scary because at one point I thought that uh, I, I, um, I could have been a, uh, one of the victims and eventually succumb uh, because it was a scary time. So um, we have to buckle down seriously. And, uh, and um, I think that most authorities have really emphasized to buckle down because things are going to get worse. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and so the, 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 as you told us months ago, when we had you on the first time to talk about this, um, follow the rules, right? Social distancing, wash your hands, wear your mask. Um, the very basic things, right? I mean, show that you not only care about, you, you know, your fellow human beings, but that you also care about yourself. Mm. Um, more importantly, until we resolve this, and part of resolving it will have to do with the vaccine, the other part will have to do us continuing to do right by each other, um, our economy is not, is not going to pick up, which is the thing that most people care about. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, Janika, I don't know whether you were involved in any way at all in terms of seeing patients. What was your experience like during this COVID period as, as a doctor? As a... Yes. Um, so... I was in um, internal medicine residency. I was in my last year of internal medicine residency in a very busy New York City hospital during the time. So um, I was very much involved with COVID. Um, I remember, you know, in early March when we first had our, we had our first COVID case 
and um, you know, all everyone was just you know very shocked because we we were hearing about COVID in the news, and then we had our very fo- first COVID case, and then by next week, um, it just doubled and it kept on doubling and doubling and doubling, um, and it got to the point where. I think at most we had like 50 ventilated patients in the whole hospital. And mind you, the ICU can only hold about 16 ventilated patients. So these ventilated patients, they were in the ICU that we had to um, take the PACU and create and put ventilated patients in there. Um, They were ventilated patients in the emergency room still because there were no rooms upstairs for them to go to. Um, there were ventilated patients in just the regular medical floors where, and on those floors, those nurses, they're not trained to take care of ventilated patients. Mm -hmm. So it was very, 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 um, chaotic during that time. Everybody was very overwhelmed. Um, uh, during the day, uh, multiple people would go into cardiac arrest. Um, like maybe like five, six times in a day, someone would go into a cardiac arrest and we would have to go perform CPR. Um, sometimes they made it. Uh, sometimes, most times they did not. <clears throat> um, and then it, then it got to the point where we had to start triaging, um, you know, who we were going to perform um, uh, cardiac arrest on because if we have two cardiac arrests at the same time, it was just too much for um, us to handle, especially if they were older um, and we knew that the odds of them surviving the cardiac arrest were low, you know, we would put more efforts on a younger person just because it got to that point. It got to that point. Um, So, and we we almost also ran out of ventilators um, as well and oxygen tanks. And, uh, you know, I would come into the ER. As soon as I come in, someone is doing, um, having a cardiac arrest. I have to go in and jump in and perform CPR on the patient. Uh, so it was, it was very, very, it was a busy time. It was a scary time. Um, it was a very overwhelming time. And, and the worst part, it was, you know, calling the loved ones of the, of the, of the patient who passed away from COVID. And that was, I had to have many phone calls like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know Mona Lisa has some questions, but before, I think there's something that you said that, that, you know, how overwhelming it was, how much of it was happening. And I think for, for folks, and I just, I'm saying it only because I know very often people who were not in the medical field, um, like me and Mona Lisa and others, sometimes we kind of, think about, you know, the folks, the doctors in ways because, you know, uh, we lost our loved ones and whatever it is, and we were angry. And what people did not realize is that this was a new disease that affected multiple things. And I think doctors, the medical field was learning, right, about all of the impact of this particular disease on the body as it was happening at the same time, they were getting many, many, many patients. And at the same time, they had to make choices about, like you said, some very difficult choices about who do you save, right? In the triage, mm-hmm. which I'm sure for every, every doctor who swear an oath to save every life must be extremely difficult, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for to both of you for the work that you do in this, um, to try to do the best with the skills that you have in spite of not having all of the information giving the context of this particular disease. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mona Lisa. Yes, so Janika, I'm thinking, I'm a little high. Dr. Benoit, would, let me call you a lot, call you Dr. Benoit too. Um, Dr. B too. <laughs> Having to face um, the challenges of, of, of treating patients with COVID, I know Regardless of what your experience was, no matter the most experienced physician, 
felt the challenges. So I could imagine for you, it was much greater. Yet you seem to have faced it with confidence and you're sitting there face talking about it like, okay, piece of cake, okay. Um, yet I'm asking myself, were there times where you had to say, you know what? Let me go to the bathroom and call dad and say, what should I do in this, dad? This is what I'm facing. Were, were there times that you had to consult with your father as, a, as an experienced physician and say, dad, what would you do? Um, no, I, <laughs> it was actually very interesting. My father was telling me, my father, question asked, but... my father was actually telling me not to be too much of a hero. <laughs> 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 because I was ready to go out there and, you know, do what I had to do, even though I was very tired, I was ready to go back to work. Um, and my dad told me, you know, don't be too much of a hero, actually. Um, but, you know, that's the thing. When you're a physician, you, like, every physician who feels like in their heart of hearts that they were called to be a physician, you, you feel a duty to help. You know, like you are like I was every day I came to work. It's like going to war. I know. I was ready to, you know, go to battle. That's how I came into work. That battle where you feel like, you know what? This patient life is in my hand. My license is on the line. Um, I don't want to ask this, this doctor that's because they don't really know me like that. I don't want them to know that. I don't know what I'm doing, but let me call dad. No, you don't, you don't, you don't have time to like call because there's a person who's dying in front of you. <laughs> I didn't have time to go call my father. Like you have to make decision and you need to make it fast. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's a war, what Ali said. It's a war. There's still time yeah, to call time home. To call, 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 <laughs> no, you need to, you need to make a decision fast. Wow. Uh -oh. Jenica, can you, can you tell them your experience when you had COVID? Oh, yeah, I was, I was well. itching to go back to. I was itching to go back to work. My my father told me to, um, you know, just rest for a couple of days. Um, and I, I had a fever for about a day, and I was very just very tired. But um, it, you know, it felt strange just staying at home in the bed. <laughs> I wasn't used to that. Um, and my father was like, no, you're not ready to go back. I said, oh, no, I think I'm ready. I'm ready to go back to work. Uh, yeah, because I knew, you know, because if there's, I was a person at home. So I'm like, okay, well, if I'm at home, that's only create, that's one less doctor to cover on the wait, floor. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. COVID is scary. Now, mm. I understand you guys are educated. You know a lot about, the, about, about this, this virus. However... To be a physician and then to know now that you have COVID. I mean, I know I had a lot of physician friends that had it. And I'm asking myself, having seen what your patients have gone through, having watched how many of them, you know, had their last breath, wasn't it, did it feel scary for you to, to undergo the experience? I mean, it wasn't scary for me because my symptoms were not extreme. Like my okay. symptoms were actually very minor. I was able to handle it. Um, like I wasn't, I was never short of breath. I mean, I was just feverish and tired and that was something that I could handle. Um, but so that's the thing about the COVID. Not, 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 not really, not really, you can, not really. <laughs> what? Yes? Not, not really, when you, when, you, when you feel so bad, you call it, Daddy, I don't feel good, Daddy. Yeah, okay. the, first, the first day when I came home from work, yes, I was I was feverish and I, I did not I did not feel well. After that first day, then I my like my I defrosted, my fever went down, and it was just more feelings of tiredness that I that I had. Um, but then after that first week, after those seven days, I was ready to go back to work again. I was feeling okay. Um, and just ready to go back to work. So that's the thing about the COVID symptoms. There's a huge, is a like the spectrum of symptoms are really enormous. Um, so my symptoms were minor in comparison to the symptoms that I've seen of my patients who came in short of breath, initially having to be on nasal cannula, then increased to high flow, then 
then ventilated. Um, so I had I had minor symptoms. Dr. Marcel, uh, yeah. oh, go ahead, Marani. Yeah. Um, give us a reminder again in terms of, because you had talked to us about this before, but in terms of the, the, the comorbidities, right? The sort of uh, 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 issues that people have that would make them, you know, more sort of uh, uh, at risk for this if they catch it or, or can you just kind of go through that with us again and tell us about these these things all right but um um before i answer the question the reason why dr janika benoit my daughter uh overcame covid so fast because she's very athletic she she's mm. very athletic yes so she's 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 kept in good shape so her body was strong enough to combat mm. the, 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 the COVID. That, that's very important. She's very athletic. So I think that that really um, um, prompted her to, re, to, 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 reco- to an expedient recovery. As far as your question is concerned, the, um, 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 there are many comorbidities um, that put you at risk for COVID. Um, um, uh, first of all, um, 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 looking at a social, a social, um, 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 just the social parameters themselves uh, are are good indicators who's going to be COVID or not. Um, um, blacks and Hispanics uh, are, are more at risk, are, are hospitalized much more than whites, and they die much more than whites. The majority of people who die, close to 300,000 people, then they, they, a lot of them are Blacks and Hispanic. It's not so much of a genetic differences, but rather is a social uh, 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 differences. Uh, Blacks and Hispanics, they, they, the kind of job they do put them at risk. They are the essential workers. They are the one who are the um, who are the, the porters. They are the messengers. They are the uh, the um, the um, the uh, the people who, or the housekeepers uh, they have to they have to be at work so th- they at rest so just looking at socially socially and in econ- and, and economically also m- most whites have the have the luxury to stay at home on their computer and work many blacks don't have the, that chance they have to travel they have to get on a bus they have to get on a train and you know those compact places put you at risk, all right? So the social and economic disadvantages of Blacks um, put them at risk for COVID than whites. Now, looking at, intermedically speaking, uh, patients who are over the obese, they're at risk because they don't have the ability to expand their lung. They have somehow some form of lung restrictions. So therefore, they, they, can, they cannot be people who are di- diabetics, people who are hypertensive, who are people who are immunocompromised, meaning that people who, are, who have cancer, being treated for cancer, um, um, or people who are being treated for chemotherapy. And lastly, lastly, people who are, who are elderly people. They are the most at risk. That's why they are the first one who's going to be, who's going to be, who's going to be uh, uh, um, uh, vaccinated. But I think that we have to remove that framework. COVID is different. COVID does not spare old or young. And recently, there was a study done by Lojola Institute, which showed that they they look at 3,000 young people, 18 to 35. A good 60% of them uh, uh, um, were hospitalized, and 4.6 of them died. So I think that framework of who at risk for COVID should be should be at everybody is at everybody is at risk for COVID. Once you have that concept in mind, so you, is, because at first when they said, "Oh, COVID is for the old people," the young people didn't care. They they go out, they they, they socialize, they do that, and they they are the ones who are the most no, no, troubled. No. Some people. So I think that um um we we, we should not paraphrase this way, what risk for COVID, everybody's at risk for COVID. Hmm. Dr. Janika Benoit, 
Tell us how quickly did a patient's oxygen requirement um, progress? Yeah, so, um, so let's say I had an admission, usually during the height of COVID, everybody was coming with COVID. Um, mostly everybody was diagnosed with COVID or suspected to be diagnosed with COVID. So we were treating them as such. Um, so it could be that the patient comes into the emergency room needing just simple nasal cannula um, at, you know, let's say two or three liters. Uh, and within maybe anywhere from a couple of hours to 24 hours, um, they could uh, progress to being mechanically ventilated. It was that quick. It was that quick. Um, and that happened a lot. There was um, very rapid turnover from needing simple nasal cannula, then progressed to high flow um, um, nasal cannula, which delivers more oxygen, um, then, or oxymask, which also delivers a higher amount of oxygen. And then when that wouldn't suffice, we would have no choice but to put the patient underneath the mechanical ventilator. So it could be that one day they're fine and then five hours later, they need more oxygen and then that oxygen is not enough and then we have to um, intubate them. So anywhere from like five to 24 hours, they can, they rapidly to progress. Okay, now, so how do you determine um, whether those patients need to have an ABG or not? Um, so we usually um, do ABG if we're going to, especially if they're requiring high amounts of oxygen, um, as soon as they come in and their um, respiratory system is compromised, we just do an ABG right then and there. Um, because sometimes when you check the oxygen level with a pulse ox, there, there could be multiple confounding variables. For example, if they're cold, the saturation could appear lower than normal. The O2 saturation. Um, yeah, the O2 saturation. So we always- to you, Mona Lisa. I was huh? in nursing, I dropped out. Oh. <laughs> so, in the emergency room for a while when I was in nursing. So, um, so anytime a patient will come in and they are hypoxic, we, we get an, an ABG just, you know, just to check because we know that that level of oxygen is, you know, the level of oxygen that is present in the blood. So that is a number that we can, we can trust. And, you know, and then we'll check it again if we have to, um, you know, put them on a higher level of oxygen. We'll check again just to see like how, um, low the oxygen is getting. So we do check ABGs often just to ensure that, uh, you know, that the oxygen level is as low as we think it to be. Okay. Or we suspect it to be. Johnny? I, I, I know that you, you probably have a lot more questions when I decide, now that I know, I keep discovering new layers with you. I mean, you've, you've, you've studied everything. But, um, you know, I wanted to, if you don't have anything else, Monarisa, I wanted to switch over to the core of the subject today. Yes. And Dr. Marcel Benoit, you, you now, I mean, as all of us have heard, right, and you had talked about this before, uh, uh, slightly in the last time, the last time we had an interview with you on, on COVID-19. Um, but we now have uh, a vaccine. Apparently today, the first truck left for distribution and big deal, right? Now, um, many people, many, many people, particularly in the black community, um, do not feel that if for many, many reasons, uh, there are good historical reasons, um, but there are also current reasons why they don't want to take this vaccine. Um, I'll say this for myself, I'll say that that I remember Dr. Fauci saying that in his experience, he had never seen a vaccine being ready any sooner than like four years, right? Mm. Now, this vaccine less than, I don't know, six months 
I'm sure in terms of the number of people that they've done the, the test on, maybe hundreds of thousands, I don't know what the protocols are in terms of the number of people they need to test these vaccines on before they believe the CDC will give you know, them authorizations to fast track it and give them authorizations to do it. But tell us a little bit about first, the, the if you know about the process and your perspective on the vaccine itself or the many vaccines okay. that are now coming out. All right, so as you, we all know that COVID has created a, a chaos around the world. A million of lives have been, have, have been lost. Um, the economy of all major Western countries are in trouble. And, and the science had no choice to be at the forefront to put a, to, to put a halt to, to this pandemic. Uh, science has always been there. Um, if we go back to 1918, um, uh, uh, science has been there. Um, if you go back to uh, the polio, science has been there. Uh, if you go back to the smallpox, science has been there. And so forth and so on and so forth. So science has always been um, the pathway to normalcy. Now, there is a there were good reasons to be skeptical by the virus because of the speediness of, the, of, of, of this vaccine. But people don't understand that is it, the, we, um, science did not start to work on the vaccine a year ago. In 2002, there was a, a COVID-1 that, um, that, um, that, um, uh, that caused many lives that caused many, 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 many lives were lost in China. And at the time, the Chinese had really, um, they knew the, the skeleton, or to say it in technical term, the genomic sequence, the skeleton of the virus, they knew it. And they were, they've been working on it for, for years. So um, um, COVID-2 COVID has really created a speed in the science scientific world to bring up a vaccine. Now, and if we are today, we ask ourselves, is the beginning to the end of the, of the pandemic? Um, the, this vaccine is new. It has never been done that kind of, um, the way, the way, the way it, it, is, it, it is produced has never been produced. They take a small sample out of the virus because the virus is a messenger RNA like. There are many other viruses that are DNA like. This one is a messenger RNA like. And that, that the role of the vaccine is to, is to, mount, is to, is to help you to mount a, a response when you face with, a, 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 um, with COVID. It's like you're going to battle to a war, you get all your arsenal ready when your enemies is, is, there, is there and you attack. That's the role of the vaccine. So Pfizer has... The biotech, which is a German, a German um, company, we started, we started the first trial with with, with, with the messenger RNA. And then biotech find, it, find itself that they have the, the, the technical uh, apparatus to continue on and they asked Pfizer to coalesce with them to bring it out. Pfizer was not the, the one. Right? Pfizer get the big name, but it's not Pfizer. It's Germany. It's from Germany. It's a biotech right. company. But Pfizer get all the all the other all the name because it's an American all you know, the credit, company. right? The credit. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's not Pfizer. So this vaccine was a vaccine that I was um they they uh they they ran it into forty five thousand people and half people receive a placebo and half receive the vaccine. And um 
out of the people who received the, the, the vaccine, 198 caught the virus anyway, all right? But nobody were, were really sick. In the placebo group, 38 of them were really sick and one died, one died. So they come up with the final result that the vaccine was 95% eff efficacious, meaning that if you get the vaccine, you will not be infected with the virus. Hence, you will not. You're, you're muted. Message when you're back, back to the vaccine. We are facing with an alarming number of death. That vaccine, the first, the first goal of the vaccine is to reduce the number of death. That's the key thing. So the vaccine is there, is efficacious. That, that, that's a sure thing. Now, the safety profile of the vaccine is, although it's reported in the data, 4.6 people had adverse effect, but we're going to see the real efficacy, the, the real safety profile of the vaccine with mass vaccination. Because we, they started in, 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 in Great Britain, now, tomorrow, they're going to start in New York. We will see the safety profile of the vaccine during. It is. So here, it, I don't know if my, huh? if it's my. Uh, no, no, I was going to, I didn't know you finished. Yeah. No, 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 it's a call. It's a call. Okay. So, um, so, so basically um, um, the, the, the vaccine um, um, w works, but it's a question now uh, whether people will will be <laughs> comfortable to take it. And I think that that's something that, as a concerned citizen, you should think about it because not take the vaccine, you are at risk to be to to be to infect your family members and affect others, and then COVID will never will never cease. Et Johnny, alors si ça va déranger nous, pour satisfaction publique créolophone nous, hein, si nous te cas permettre, docteur Bernard, nous te cas faire un petit recap sur ce qu'on dit là en anglais, ah bon, pour ce qu'on dit en anglais, en créole, pour public créolophone, hein, alors ce recap, tu es demandé de Yona et auditeur, Yona auditeur qui a regardé nous actuellement en Haïti, qui m'a décidé de cas dire ça en créole pour s'il vous plaît, parce que j'entends parler de vaccin, hein, mais qui ça n'a pas parlé là et okay. nous venons. On est parlé par l'anglais, les vignes de deuxième nature. L'office n'habite, l'office aux États-Unis. De temps en temps, vous pensez en anglais plus qu'en créole parfois. Bon, en tout cas, en tout cas comme, comme, comme nous dit à l'heure là, que, et nous avons nous constaté que les gens que COVID l'a créé ont on, 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 on tumulte non, non, à travers le monde. En plus, le monde mourit à travers le monde. Un peu mon mourir aux États-Unis et jusqu'à présent les États-Unis a fait face avec la mort parce que Kounyala et, et Kounyala nous n'en trois mille monde qui mourit par jour aux États-Unis et ils prétendent que ils parlent beaucoup plus mal toujours en janvier, février et mars pas bien plus pour mourir et selon CDC ils diront ça que par le et 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 et, et, et les nouveaux venus en mars nous qu'à arriver à 450 000 monde qui mourit. Ce so, qui veut dire que gagner une raison est majeure pour que la science fasse bagaille. La science est toujours là. La science était là durant, durant, durant flou en 1918 là. La science était là les polio. La science était là les, 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 les smallpox. La science était là les tuberculoses. La science était là pour HIV. La science est toujours là. So, ils n'ont pas face avec une crise mondiale. Il n'est pas possible pour la santé de les bois, bois rasés pour quitter mon monde comme ça. Ce so, fait que, en plus, on est très sceptique de, 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 très sceptique de, 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 de,
en plus monde la Chine de mourir et depuis là ça la et chinois yo 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 de... séquence et séquence et et et, et séquence même de séquence ADN non ADN non yo connaît qui s'allie yo connaît yo connaît virus là même so depuis là ça il travaille sur lui mais pas de marché pressé là dedans pas de marché pressé parce que pas nous nous fait tout le temps ça pas grand rien mais depuis que covid là pas tout le monde pas de là j'aime l'Allemagne qui a travaillé son vaccin déjà so les là m'a travaillé sous un les mal à la marie venant point les pas gagnés aux sources techniques les mandés Pfizer pour les mettre tous ensemble mais c'est pas Pfizer qui découvre il c'est pas Pfizer c'est biotech on on compagne allemand mais qu'on y a là tout on c'est Pfizer vaccine y oublier biotech vaccine il y a pas il parle de Pfizer vaccine c'est pas Pfizer vaccine c'est bio c'est bio c'est biotech and Pfizer anyway so pour Pfizer faire une étude il a gardé il a gardé 45000 monde il a gardé 45000 monde um 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 il 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 on place beau placer beau à son bail qui pas gagne aucun effet yo bail on l'autre partie on l'autre partie et vie que yo gardé que moun qui te prend qui pas prend qui te pour placer beau en pile gain gain 38 là dedans yo qui te venu malade et même qui mérité par l'hôpital et youn là dedans te youn là dedans te mouri et l'autre moun qui te prend vaccin hein et en pile là yo yo à peu près en trentaine tout yo même yo té yo té yo té qui té prend virus ça quand même mais yo pas yo pas besoin à l'hôpital et moun qui té pour placer voir yo ne mourir là-dedans yo ne mourir là-dedans so à partir de data ça yo voit que vaccin li efficace à 95% 95% veut dire que si on prend vaccin ou gain 95% chance chance pour pas gagner pour pas covid et 95% on va pas mourir. Et ça veut dire. Et ça veut dire. Tu vas aller mourir ou prendre un vaccin. OK Mais nous connaît efficacité vaccin hein? mais gon gagner en pile question de doute est-ce que vaccin hein, li safe Et problème dans ça. Mais safety a été analysé li mais yu, mais vraiment nous ka dit que 45 000 monde pas assez. Mais avec vaccination massive qui va le faire combien là, nous pas le constater est-ce que c'est est-ce que vaccin est safe. So vaccin est-ce que tout le monde a dit que vaccin ça c'est là c'est sur la fin de la pandémie. OK? Mais définitivement gon gon qui va l'accomplir quand même là. À quoi va l'accomplir, il va réduire le nombre de monde qui va mourir. Ça c'est sûr. Et et c'est ça qui qui est le plus qui est plus alarmant plus à la main. Non, l'air qu'on prend vaccin, ça veut dire que on sauve. C'est à dire que bon, pas besoin rien encore. Faut prendre deux shots et, et deux shots. Ce premier shot là, il dit que on protège à 52.4. Deuxième non, on protège à 95%. L'air prend vaccin, faut toujours porter masse. Um, 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 uh, uh, quand 10% de monde fin vacciné, c'est les ça ou qu'a dit comme ça que oui, les ça que nous caractérisons masse, ok? Now, pour moi qui suppose pour vaccin, qui est pour vaccin? Et mon capitaine de Mlayo, c'est via ici pareil. Mon, mm-hmm. en pile non, n'a pas travaillé dans nursing home comme si on est il y a moins de nous pour vaccin pour prendre monde qui housekeeper qui peut nettoyer champ maladie là on est dans champ maladie faut nous vacciner monde qui qui travaille comme clerk dans dans emergency room clerk dans 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 l'hôpital yo faut nous vacciner monde monde qui cap travaille dans cuisine faut nous vacciner tout monde qui censé healthcare workers yo supposé vacciner et surtout en pile haïtien là qui travaille comme que en pile hôtel fermé en pile haïtien dans hôtel faut 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 vacciner 
OK? Mon qui pas supposé vacciner, c'est mon yo dit comme ça que qui immunocompromis. C'est quand des monde que qui gagne problème immunitaire. Ça veut dire que sous une maladie auto-immune, maladie que comme cancer ou on on prend on prend et on prend radiation, on prend chimiothérapie, yo dit pas supposé prendre. Deuxièmement, femme enceinte pas supposé prendre. Si monde qui gagne moins de 16 ans pas 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 supposé prendre et finalement l'autre jour là gon l'autre indication monde qui fait qui gagne histoire d'allergie si que ou son monde ou gain allergie ou gain pile même d'allergie c'est pas qu'il gros gratte non allergie que ou ou et l'autre fait allergie toute bagarre lever sous corps et puis gain monde qui c'est avec il marcher avec un plume relé ça un epipen sou gen ep si que ou gen epipen ou pas supposé prendre pas supposé prendre vaccin après ça tout monde supposé vacciner concou Johnny dit matin pour pour un pile haïtien yo pas comprendre grand de ça crivé là mais pour américain américain comprendre ça qui va passer là parce que matin là les que choc là quitter Michigan pour l'albay pour l'albay 2 millions d'oses au vaccin pour un pile américain son gloire lié parce que yo dit finalement nous pas joindre on, on bout avec pandémie ça OK et en pile là il s'est mort tout en pile là il s'est mort dans covid en pile là il s'est mort et nous connaît que peuple nous en tête tu il pas veut tendre parfois parfois c'est 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 un peu tête tu mais gain en pile fois c'est mauvaise information qui circule dans dans la communauté donc même même d'a conseiller tout le monde que me dit là yo pour yo prendre vaccin hein? pour protéger tête yo mais on même là sauf garder me là sous qu'on vieux maman vieux papa qui la caillé qui pas qu'à déplacer yo Walmart et CVS yo pral yo yo pas yo, yo ka dispatch au monde pour une vacciner grand monde qui la qui 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 ki pas qu'à déplacer donc son 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 gros bail qui fait là son gros et 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 bail qui fait là et nous espérer que finalement un jour et pandémie la placer pas d'être non parce que et crise là son crise qui cause trop problème en pays a mon père dit job mon père dit tout bagaille donc en euh, euh, crois que euh, il était temps pour nous tourner avec à la à la, à la normalité Janika, let me ask you this because it's 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 and it's almost the same question that I ask uh, uh, Dr Marcel Benoît um I mean you know the history of the United States you know in being in the medical field you might remember the many many tests that they have run on african americans um for syphilis and many other things um dr benoit mentioned marcel benoit mentioned how we were our community was the most at risk and and we know the reasons why we're the most at risk is that you know we are in low income uh positions we are in consumer facing positions uh you know um and we don't get paid well enough for those things right i mean our community doesn't get paid well enough for the for the work that they do um many of them don't have health insurance um and so what i'm hearing people saying is wait a minute um when things were good we were not good enough mm-hmm. right to receive the basics of what human beings should receive why all of a sudden that the fauci is on tv bringing out a sister talking about how you black folks need to line up and people were like wait a minute something in, you know this this square is not round so what is your what have you heard right have you heard from maybe folks that are younger because this is from folks that are a bit older that I'm hearing this but have you heard from folks that are younger that have that kind of mindset um what do we say right as a physician if if i came to you and i gave i i told you these things as my concerns um what would you tell me yeah i think the biggest part is just um the education factor um as a physician to just provide um education about um the new vaccination so in so and also my um my outlook on the vaccine is very in patient responses that i have is much different now than it used to be um compared to when i was in residency 
So the specialty that I'm in right now is in sports medicine. Um, before I was in internal medicine residency. So I would deal with a lot of patients coming in, you know, for um, hypertension, diabetes, just, I would see that population of patients. Um, so, and this population of patients that I'm seeing now, um, although they do have their concerns, um, it's, they're, I'm not saying that they're not concerned about the vaccine because I know everybody has their own questions about it. Um, it's just that the population of, uh, population of patients that I'm dealing with now, they're more um, musculoskeletal oriented. So I'm working with a, a different patient population. But to answer your question though, um, I think the first part is just educating ourselves. This is something very new. Um, we have a um, general concept of how vaccinations work. Um, um, and the fact, but the fact that this is very new, that it's been created very quickly, um, I could understand the concern and the worry that patients may have. Um, My yes. So my next question is going to be for both of you, both Dr. Benoist. People have concern that, okay, the AIDS virus came and nobody cared to come about, to come out with a, a vaccine. Why this rush with COVID? <laughs> but the, 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 HIV vaccine, the HIV virus, which is a DNA virus, is really different from, from is, is a very um, 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 different virus from the co the COVID vi vi vaccine. Now, the, for for the, the the coronavirus, it has it, it does has some spike what called spike protein that that attach to the host cells, and then as long as you break those 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 spike protein, you you disallow the virus to enter into your body. But the HIV virus is very tricky. It gets into the cell itself, inside the cell itself. All right? So it makes it more, more difficult for you to create a vaccine like this. So um, I think that uh, people have that skepticism or oh, why we never find a, find a, a cure for HIV. Now they found a cure for COVID. Um, uh, uh, science is... is Science is never politicized. Science is science. A true scientist is never be a politician. But we we want to to to, to better the, the world. We want, we want to make sure that the world is is moving in the right direction. So uh, that question HIV versus COVID it's just politics. It has nothing to do with it. Politics science never indulge in this as you can see whenever that a politician try to engage a scientist into politicize a a scientific domain the science is gonna boom back all right and it is the main reason is by politicization of the covid 19 that um us is find itself in such predicament if people were Everybody wore masks, like in Korea, like in China. We're not being that in, in, in that. We have we have a lot of people dying. A lot of people will die, but not to that rate. Right? It's all politics. Everything is politics. So that's the reason why that people are talking about that. And I think that um, um, we have to differentiate differentiate the two. So, Doc, I know you recently did a survey yesterday. What were the findings of your survey? I know you were asking if people wanted to take. Would you take the vaccine? What was what was the results like? What were the yeah, results? Most pe most people are are um uh, it's a no no. They they would not take the vaccine. I know. I figured that. I I, I kind of anticipated that. Yeah, but I, most I, people I, would not take the vaccine because a lot of them do not know. Um, it, um uh, it's like it's it's like there's a lot of misinformation. There are, there are a lot of of anti vax people out there who are fueling the, uh, uh, the question about the vaccine and then it make it worse either. But you see, pour Haïtien, c'est le vaccin qui sauve nous. 
<laughs> en plus, les qui ont vécu aujourd'hui, hein? c'est à cause de vaccin. Si vous n'avez pas de vaccin, vous n'avez pas de vivre. Vous comprenez? So, tout d'un coup, les Haïtiens n'ont pas de vaccin parce que c'est le vaccin qui fait nous vivre. Donc, qui fait faire avocat du diable? Mm -hmm. En plus, le monde nous a été concerné parce que, auparavant, lorsque tu as parlé de cette affaire de vaccin, qui côté vous voulez tester vaccin, c'est dans, dans les pays noirs. Ok, vous voulez tester en Haïti, vous voulez tester en Afrique. Pourquoi en Afrique? Pourquoi, pourquoi en Haïti? Et pourquoi pas aux États-Unis? Là où la maladie ravage, là où la maladie tue les gens. Ok? Pourquoi ça c'est dans. Où, 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 où est Haïti? Oui, oui, oui. Vous n'avez pas circulé sans masque, hein? Alors, alors la, pour qui ça la caille nous? Vous comprenez, vous comprenez pour oui, qui ça nous? Oui. 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 Non, non, mais d'accord. Mais moi, d'accord que gagner le doute sur ça, mais il oui. faut garder vraiment, il faut garder les choses beaucoup plus scientifiques pour qu'on comprenne les Je comprends. D'accord, je suis d'accord, je moi, respecter la science, respecter la science. Et, et je ne voudrais pas l'ignorance non plus. Oui, respecter les gens qui savent, les gens qui lisent dans vos livres. Vous connaissez moi, mais vos livres là, tout, je ne sais ça. Mais en même temps, tout, et, et ou, ou pas qu'à empêcher et, that, that type of higher order of thinking that people possess. Mm -hmm. When they analyze things and, and in their analysis, you find out what they're saying somehow does make sense. Je ne pas supporter mm -hmm. conspiracy theory in certain cases, mais parfois, vous connaissez. Vous parlez à partir de, de, de certains. Et victimisa, victimisation de donc c'est de chaque chaque boule chaque boule est là de l'eau chaude fait de l'eau fraîche exactement oui 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 vu de la fraîche c'est cool des événements qui passaient dans la communauté noire et surtout où est j'en ai une victime j'en ai une victime nous so ça rend mon yo un petit peu méfiant ouais so I'll give you both uh, maybe an opportunity to really uh, maybe summarize for us in terms of the vaccination the I'm not asking for, I guess, uh, uh, for you to make a medical recommendation, but it's your personal perspective about the vaccine um, as people are thinking about it, and maybe even where they should be go, where they should go and do some research about this, so that they can get more comfortable about this vaccine as we as we wrap up. Now, uh, I don't know if you uh, want to start uh, with uh, Janika or or uh, Dr. Marcel. Now, let me to show you the, uh, the uh, uh, science wants to create a, uh, a confidence in, in this vaccine. Yesterday, the FDA uh, met for 17 hours. 17 hours to deliberate about the uh, the emergency use authorization of the vaccine. This is to create that confidence. I don't think um, those people sit down and lie to American people, all right? Because they want to make sure that what they're looking at is correct. So that's one. And on Saturday, yesterday, the CDC, another major institution in the country, yes, Uh, they're under the federal umbrella, that's true, but the scientists are not. The scientists are again, the advisory panel met again, and they have deliberated and they granted the emergency unit. For, for, for my own sake, being a physician, being a scientist, I, 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 I think that um, um, uh, I, I will give a green light for the vaccine because I think the vaccine is going to save lives, all right? Now, what is a little bit perplexed in my mind and in many minds of many scientists, we don't know the various side effects of the vaccine. That's the question. But, in my, but all of us are sure that the vaccine is going to save lives. And I think that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. It's going to save lives. Dr. Yeah. Benoit, you know how much this community trusts you. You yeah. know how many followers you have. Yeah. We trust you. <laughs> and, 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 and frankly, I, I will take the vaccine. 
I, I won't take the vaccine myself. Now, now, now that you say that, you know that many people are going to be following yeah. your footsteps. Yeah, I will take the vaccine myself because I look at the data. It, it looks, it looks, it looks, it looks good. And uh, and I think that the bottom line, people don't understand that the vaccine is going to save lives. <laughs> That's the key thing. The that the vaccine going to vaccine la empêche de mourir. C'est premier bagage pour réaliser. Parce qu'on peut mon mourir, on peut mon mourir. C'est premier bagage pour mettre en tête non. Vaccin a empêché un malade et pour pour mourir. OK? Now, ou ka m ka comprendre ou concerné vaccin ka bay ça li fait et a bien ça li fait. A bien. A bien de trois mois. Oui, oui. Gien moun gien la bien effet secondaire. A bien moun ka bien effet secondaire. Gien moun ka bon on bay quelconque. Mais at the end of the day, à la fin, de, à la fin, à, à, à la fin de la journée, en pile en nous, n'a pas Christmas, n'a pas Easter, n'a pas Labor Day, n'a pas petit, les petits n'a marié, n'a pas tout, n'a pas n'a pas jour fête non, n'a pas tout bel bagage ça. Gan pile mon jour et jour d'hier qui mourit déjà, 300 000 monde ça. Si on dit que y a un vaccin, il doit pour y prendre parce que il mourit déjà. Ok, so pas voulu faire partie de statistique là, mais on met ça en tête. Vaccin, il a sauvé la vie. C'est ça le dit. Qui est fait secondaire, yo? Mbarone. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. Dr. Janika, anything you want to add? Fair, or... fair um, so for myself, um, I have yet to look at the data on this new vaccine, so I'm not going to comment too much on about it. I know that the FDA didn't approve it, but um, my the, my own research needs to be done before I um, speak on it or recommend it. So with all the respect that you have for dad, right? Huh? With all the respect that you have for dad, you still want to do your own research, correct? Oh, of course. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, that's how this medicine works. Um, you always want to look at the data and understand it for yourself. I totally agree. And, I, and I'm sure he, he agrees as well. That's what, I I think that's what he's also expecting. Mm. <laughs> right, Dr. Benoit? <laughs> yes, correct. I, mean, I agree. I agree. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. On that note, I think it's um, my, my group, because I have to fly to Jeremy right now. I know. Um, my team and Jamie have been blowing up my phone. Um, I have a group of women that I meet with every Sunday afternoon, right after the mojo. I, I close the show and I fly. I, 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 I go straight to Jamie. I simply want to thank this dynamic duo of Dr. Benoit's. Uh, I, I, I love you guys and you know it, especially you, Janika. It's, it's, it's overwhelming. Um, your dad, you know what you've done to him. Um, it's 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 um it's a blessing to have you, and, and and you know what you represent for that group of young people who traveled with you. Was it two thousand seven or, or two thousand eight? Um, I can't even remember. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but we still talk about you. And um, and every time I'm, I'm I'm doing conferences or sessions for those young people, and your name always come up. Trust me, you know how uh, people of my generation we used to say, oh, you know, young men, you say, I want to be like Mike. So anytime I I celebrate your success, or I'm celebrating the success of any of our young people, it, your name always come up. So forever you will remain a role model for your generation. And there's. Um, going to be times where you may have to come and give back. We can inspire. So we expect you to uplift, you know, the ones that come after you so they can do, so they can be the next future uh, Janika Benoit, Dr. Janika Benoit. So it is with pride that I call you Dr. Janika Benoit. Mm -hmm. It was a, a pleasure to have you. Dr. Benoit, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I'm sorry the focus was not as much on you, but but more on Dr. No, Jimmy. no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, it's okay, so okay it's okay. Behind the scene, you're, you're in the spotlight all the time. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I have to hear about Dr. Janika today. But uh, to you, Johnny, it's always a pleasure. My partner, my partner in crime, my, my co-host, my boss on, on the campaign trail. Uh, <laughs> all your orders. We hope to be together on Saturday uh, in Georgia uh, with the rest of the team. Um, yes, Karen, yes. 
be there. Colleen Jean Pierre, most likely, we're hoping she's going to be there. With the senators, so we'd love to have you Saturday. You know, with you know, co-hosting the event. Absolutely, and yes. and we tell everyone if you're in Georgia, if you know people in Georgia, make sure they go out and vote because it is really important. The country depends on it, so uh, um, that's all we're gonna say. And yes. we'll see next week is going to be a very interesting show for all of us. Uh, stay tuned. Really join us next week. And as we always said, if it's Sunday, it is Le Mojo, and it's time to get your mojo on. And we say thank you and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. I never found someone like you.